Alright guys, so today we're going to be looking at something that uh, many people find to be quite daunting, and that is how to program one of these. So this is a commercial grade irrigation box with all the bells and whistles, start dates, percentages, um, frickin' 13 different optional valve settings, program settings, and all that good stuff. So So today we're just going to be having a basic look at how to run this and do basic programs on this and basically how to set it up for your uh, for your lawn or whatever you got going on. As always, if you want to uh, purchase this particular uh, system, these are really great systems. Um, if you want to purchase this particular system, check in the description below. I'm going to have a link to where you can buy this system and also similar systems like it. Um, that are going to have the same basic programming and the same basic features. So check that out and check out my channel and let's get started. All right, guys, so I'm going to try to hold this as steadily as I can. So what we have here is the control panel on this particular Rainbird. So this control panel basically is how you program it and how you run things. So the first and most obvious is auto. So auto is basically your on position. When it's in auto, it means that all the programs that you've set up on this box are going to run. So it's going to give you over here on the LCD, it's going to give you the day and the time, and it's basically going to be the operating setting for the box. Next over is going to be the off position. Off is obviously what it is, it's off. So everything's off. Nothing that is connected to this box will run when it's in the off position. The next setting is going to be the seasonal adjust setting. So it's usually got a little picture of a percentage, maybe with a raindrop, something like that. So seasonal adjust or percentage is going to adjust the amount of water that the system puts out while it runs. So what it'll basically do is at 100% you're going to be putting out the normal amount of water and so it'll run for a certain amount of time. Now this is going to be a little confusing but just bear with me. The percentage is going to automatically adjust the time it runs to put out a certain amount of the percent of the normal amount of water. So let's say normally you put out 10 gallons at 100%. Well, 60% is going to then put 6 gallons out of the system. So what you want to do is if it's raining or if it's been moist out and wet and you don't need as much water going out, you'll adjust your seasonal adjust to whatever you want. So right now we're at 60% because um, it's been a little bit moist and we don't want to overwater some of our systems or some of our uh, irrigation systems on this particular box. So that's why we have it to 60 instead of, um, instead of to 100. So actually I'm going to adjust this up because it's getting warmer. So I'm going to use these buttons here to adjust it up to 80%. So now it's putting out 80% of its standard amount of water. And that's it. That's how you set that. So next is the test all valve setting. So if I switch this to test all valves, what it will do is it will run all valves through at a certain amount of time. Now I'm not going to do that right now because we're actually doing some work on the irrigation system um, outside so it would screw the guys over if I turned it to test all valves. However, the test all valve setting is simply going to run the entire program through all systems for a certain amount of time and you can set the time on the test all valves so you can have it test the valves for five minutes for an hour for however long you want. Um, the next over is the current date so what the current date setting is simply allows you to adjust the time and day that it is so I'm doing this on the 15th of May in 2018 so that is going to be the current date and that allows the um, the clock or the program in the clock to um, keep up with the days the times and the seasons current time um, like it seems that allows you to set the time just like any other clock you're going to set the time for whatever current time um, it is watering start times so what this is is this tells the clock when it turns the program on so program a you can see over here this is program a which is um, the first start time is uh, 6 30 p.m. now you can adjust the start time so you can have the same system start at multiple times so you can have up to I don't even know but you can have a number of different start times on each system or you can just have one start time it's really um, it's really up to you so to adjust the time you can see here I just simply click up and down so this adjusts it by 15 minutes so we're just gonna leave that on 630 p.m. next over are the days so the dial here so you've got a different button for each day of the week 
So what we're going to do right now is, because I want Mondays and Tuesdays off, because those are the days we work on the system, so I'm just simply going to turn it to Monday on the dial, then I'm going to click the, the little buttons here, up or down, and that turns it off, uh, up turns it back on, so I'm going to turn Monday off, I'm going to turn this dial to Tuesday, it brings me over to Tuesday here, and I'm going to turn that off as well. But then all the rest of the days, we click through, you can see Wednesday's on, Thursday's on, Friday, Saturday, all the rest of the days are on, which is exactly what I want. Down here are the valve run times. So this clock can handle up to 13 valves. Um, some of these can handle way more. Some of them will have like up to 17, 24, really any number depending on the make of the clock and really what it's capable of and the year that it was made. This is an older one, um, so it can only handle 13, but that's plenty for uh, for most systems. So. Here you simply have each valve and then how long it's run to. So valve one, if I set it to there, look over here, that one is run for one hour, so that's probably a drip system. Number two is only six minutes, that's probably like some large rotors uh, for lawns, something like that. Number three, six minutes and on up the line. So once you hit a valve with zero time on it, that usually means that there's nothing connected to that valve or that that system, um, or that that valve is shut off for some reason. Um, and that again is up to whoever's programming it. So here we got valve four has no time on it, but valve five has time on it, which usually means that for some reason we've decided to take all the time off of valve four. It probably means that we're working on something over there or that we just don't want that area to be any wetter than it already is. So next, um, once you have that all set up, you can actually set that as an entire program. So everything I just did, you would program and you would set that as program A. So you can see over here, um, we've got different programs. So this one can handle up to three programs. So A, B, and C. So what this looks like is when I've got it on auto here, so that's run, so it's on its normal setting, I can actually switch between programs. So here I've switched to program B. And then in program B, you actually go through and you program all these settings again. And you can set it for like, so say you only want to water on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday um, on in the summer, but then you want to program on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. During the winter, what you would do is you'd set up program A for the summer, and that would have all the settings for Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Then you'd set up program B for the summer or for the winter or whatever season you want, and then that would have all the settings for that season. And this one can handle up to three programs. So. Right now, we're just running one program um, for one setting, but, um, but we could, if we wanted to, run three completely separate programs on here. So that's it. Um, second, uh, finally, we have a sensor here. Um, we've bypassed the sensor because that's not really hooked up to anything, and you're probably not going to need to use that. Um, that's basically if you want a sensor for, um, if you want to put a precipitation sensor or a moisture sensor out in your irrigation system, whatever you're, uh, whatever you're watering then that would uh, basically tell the clock that it was too wet to water and kind of do that automatically. But that gets pretty complicated and that's not usually something most people do. So finally, um, if you want to start a program manually, what you're gonna do is you're gonna simply hit manual start right here and that will start one of the systems here. So right now I have started uh, program A with uh, valve number one and that will start it automatically. Now I'm turning that off because I don't actually want to turn that that valve on right now. But if I did want to test it, what I'd do is I'd go to auto and then I would go click here to manual start and then I would simply click through. So there's one, two, three, and each time it clicks to that new one, it is going to start that system and then just run that system until you turn it off. So like what I would do if I were testing systems or checking sprinkler heads or drip systems, I would turn it to auto, I would hit manual advance, it's going to start per, uh, valve one and I would go outside and I would check on that and make sure everything is running correctly. Finally, over here in the door, they um, they have a place where it has basic instructions for your um, for your system. So it's got instructions here, but frankly, those are, they're very quite, they're really confusing to try to understand without somebody telling you what uh, what's what and frankly most of them are in different languages anyway. Um, what we always usually try to do is put a schematic here in the door that tells you where each one or where each valve runs especially if the valve is down in a building like this one is. 
Um, so see, I've got a valve one runs drip in front of the Morgan building, valve two uh, on down rotors in front of, you know, these are just where they run and the buildings they're in front of. So that's about it. All right, guys, well, there you go. That is how you run a basic Rainbird irrigation clock. Um, hopefully you found this helpful. Hopefully this helps you with your uh, irrigation projects or if you're on a new job and you're trying to figure out how to run these irrigation systems. Um, hopefully this helps you out. Um, if you got any questions about it, leave those in the comments below. Um, I'll try to get those answered. If you want to buy this clock or one similar to it, check in the description below. I'm going to have a link to where, uh, where you can purchase a system like this or one very similar. Um, yeah, that's about it. Hopefully this helped you guys out. Have a great day.